HBO's House of the Dragon premiered on Sunday night with the episode The Heirs of the Dragon. Here is my high-level reaction to the episode. As the season goes along, I will discuss the costumes in more detail, but for now, this is just my overall impression of the costumes in this episode by series costume designer Jenny Tamim. But before I do, there are major spoilers for this episode. The first thing I want to get out of the way are the wigs. I was one of the earlier voices to come out hard about them, but at least here in the premiere, they aren't as bad and certainly not as distracting as some reviewers have claimed they are. Wigs are always hard, but when you are talking about the Targaryen dynasty, for whom the most part have silver blonde hair, it's going to take some getting used to as an audience. I was never distracted by it while watching the episode. Some of the actors are much older than their characters, in particular Patty Considine, who plays King Viserys I Targaryen, but again, I didn't find it distracting. There is a lot of money on screen, and it shows. It's reported that each episode had $20 million budget compared to roughly $6 million per episode in Season 1 of Game of Thrones. Even with inflation, that's more than double. As many of you have likely watched Game of Thrones or even read the books, it can't be helped but compare the design of the prequel series to that of the show. The setting is 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones, but it still looks mostly the same with a few caveats. While the world of Westeros as seen in Game of Thrones was largely inspired by the medieval period, House of the Dragon is a real mishmash of eras. For the nobles, there is some inspiration taken from the Renaissance, the Tudor and Elizabethan eras between the late 15th to 16th centuries. But at times we are seeing costumes inspired by the 14th century, like with the sideless surcoats and wimples on the servants. I can't even imagine how many costumes there are in the first episode, but it might have been pushing into the thousands. There are a lot of background players and supporting characters in full costume, but even the principal actors had many more costumes than the main cast in Game of Thrones, who had only two or three full costumes per season at most. I was largely impressed by the look of most of the costumes. The quality and the fabrications and trim were really good, and I liked the vivid color palette, especially when it came to the house colors on display. One of my favorite aspects of the design was the vividly colored surcoats and tabards worn by the knights at the tourney. Of course, Damon's black and red armor was amazing with his winged helm and ruby embellishments that look like drops of blood. He wore an open helm for the joust. Had it not been for the fact that his character is completely bonkers, This would have been an odd choice, but he is so arrogant as to think there is no way he would be harmed. I thought that Otto Hightower's son's helm was super weird and awkward, but it sort of worked for their house. The court costumes were well done on all of the noblemen and noble ladies. Some of my favorites were the ones worn at the tourney to celebrate the soon-to-be birth of Viserys' son. I love King Viserys' costume in Targaryen red and black brocade. His costume was festooned with this beautiful embroidery of the late Valyrian the Black Dread. I've mentioned in other videos that Michelle Carriger, embroidery artist on Game of Thrones, has returned along with a team of embroidery artists. There was a studio-released image of Viserys with his crown on backwards, with the Targaryen sigil facing the back, but this appeared to be corrected in the final edit. One of the standouts of the show is all of the jewelry. There is so much here that it was almost overwhelming at times. The men and the women had loads of it, and this was always something that I wanted to see more of in Game of Thrones. There were a few significant scenes involving jewelry, one where Rhaenyra's uncle, Prince Daemon Targaryen, gives his niece a necklace made of Valyrian steel, like that of his sword, Dark Sister. Rhaenyra wears her uncle's necklace with a ruby or bloodstone setting throughout the episode. It's not the same, but the pendant looks like three Boromian rings, three circles interlocking each other. This means that if one were to cut or take away one ring, the other two would fall apart. There is also a moment where King Viserys takes his wife Emma Targaryen's gold ring after she passes away, and he looks at it before tucking it away when he's alone in his chambers. 
Another thing I thoroughly enjoyed seeing was all of the hats worn by the women and men at court, but also the servants. We don't tend to see headdresses on the principal characters because cinematographers don't like to see hats because they cast shadows and obscure faces. In particular, I love the wimple-like headdresses worn by the female servants during Emma's labor. It reminded me of Elena Tyrell, who was to my knowledge the only noblewoman in King's Landing who wore one. Now, if I was to pick out my favorite costumes in the episode, I would say that most of the costumes worn by Damon Targaryen are the best. I loved all of his looks, especially that hammered nail leather armored tunic. He dresses in the ultimate capsule wardrobe in the same way that Tyrion Lannister did, swapping out his sleeves with his long line doublets. I enjoyed seeing his laced up tunic in the brothel. Of Rhaenyra's costumes, I liked her black brocade morning gown with long hanging sleeves lined with a hint of red. Under that, she's wearing this Renaissance-style era gown with slash sleeves. But of course, the piece de resistance is Rhaenyra's fealty gown. They saved it for the end, and it is ultimately the showstopper. The red Dupioni silk gown is embroidered with her dragon Syrax on the front, and there is some subtle running stitch and beading detail on the front bodice. The black collar is embellished with more dragon motifs and the gold cloak is made from a custom woven brocade in the same design as the four-footed dragon sigil worn by Rhaegar Targaryen in a flashback scene in Game of Thrones. There have been lots of discussions online about her headdress, which could be a French hood or a traditional Russian headdress called a kokoshnik. Based on other noble ladies' costumes, I am leaning into this. And she wears the most elaborate chain of order in keeping with her father's gold crown, displaying all of the house sigils of Westeros. As for the other ladies' gowns, the two standout costumes for me were the silvery blue brocade gown worn by Rhaenys Targaryen, the queen that never was, at the tournament. And the other one that I thought was lovely, and I wish we could have seen more, was the dress that Alicent borrowed from her mother when she visited King Viserys in his bedchamber. It looked like burned out silk, and while seductive in a way, Allison still appeared sweet and innocent. Now, before I let you go, I have a few quibbles. I've mentioned this before in other videos that my main issue is with the lack of correct foundation garments on the women, and at times, some of the dresses are very ill fitting on some of the main cast. It was more obvious when I saw some of the close ups of the costumes in the still images that I noticed it. It's just really surprising for a show with so much attention to detail and with such a large budget that they would overlook this. But this is just a small quibble and I really enjoyed the episode and I can't wait to see the next one. Now, as a reminder, I will be hosting a weekly House of the Dragon live stream every Tuesday at 7 p.m. after the episode airs. I will be joined by co-hosts Shadowcat Bex and Tatiana Melendez, along with weekly guest hosts, Now, in the meantime, let me know what House of the Dragon costumes you loved or didn't love. Thank you for spending time with me. I'll see you in the next video.